In this lecture, we're going to look at another aspect of Minoan art. And remember, Minoan art is one of two kinds of art we see in the ancient Aegean. So Minoan art is from the region generally around Crete and southern parts of Greece, that uh, is regions that all have a sort of similar style of painting, similar kinds of architecture, and a sim seeming to be a similar culture. And we're going to look at some fresco paintings from the Minoan period, mostly from the Palace of Knossos, but some also from Santorini in Greece, but basically Minoan frescoes. Fresco is a kind of painting that is done, it's, fresco comes from the Italian word that means fresh, okay? And basically, fresco is done in fresh or wet plaster. You paint using uh, pigment, ground up colors suspended in water, and you paint right on the wet plaster, and as the plaster dries, the paint chemically bonds with the wall and becomes part of the plaster. So it's essentially like dyeing the wall um, using uh, pigments. So it's a very, very stable technique. Once a fresco is done, the only thing that, dis that damages the colors is if the wall itself is damaged. So even though these are now almost 4,000 years old, these some of these paintings, they're still, uh, what's left of them is still very bright and still very colorful as the originals because fresco is a very stable technique. And fresco is something that is used uh, really up to the present day. But anyway, so it's a term for a kind of painting using wet plaster, fresco. Okay, the first fresco I want to look at is this one that we just looked at last time when we were looking at the Minoan Palace on Crete. This is from that palace, and I had mentioned a couple of things about it. First of all, remember, we have the use of the hierarchy of scale with the female figures much larger than the male figures, and we also have that ancient convention for representing men and women where the men are represented with much darker skin than the women. And we have here some representations of the architecture of a Minoan palace with those very telltale tapered columns with the squashed capitals and then those stylized bulls, uh, bull's horns. And again, we don't know the meaning of this particularly, but this and some other evidence from Minos suggests that the women may have had a particularly special or powerful role in Minoan culture, but we don't know the details. So this is just one of the things that we're extrapolating from the information that we do have left. Here is a picture of a fresco inside the palace at Knossos, so the Minoan palace at Knossos. Some parts of this building have been reconstructed, so like that capital in the foreground and then the cross beams, the, the lintel that it's supporting and all of that, the upper story, and the ceiling of that room, the th so-called throne room. Those are all reconstructions, but the fresco itself, some pieces of this fresco remain. Uh, and so you can see there, uh, this is just a sort of generic view, and I've got a closer up view of the wall painting here in just a minute. The themes that we see in Minoan art tend to be themes of the natural world, themes of leisure, themes of pleasure, um, themes that are very kind of joyous seeming and pleasant seeming and that seems to be a characteristic of this culture that we know is without really any major natural conflicts or, uh, from outside you know uh, it, until the end of the culture and it seems to be very prosperous you know and very comfortable and that is reflected in the kind of art you see on the walls of the Minoan palaces. This is another view of that throne room. I'm sorry it's a slightly pixelated image but you can just see here it's a landscape with and I believe there's a better image of this in your book. There's a landscape with plants and some animals and this is sometimes called the queen's throne room and you can see there on the right hand side of the picture there is a seat that's carved out of the wall a stone seat that's carved out of the wall that's suggestive of a throne and then there are some benches around the wall as well so this may have been a room i mean it's called the queen's room we don't really know i mean it just seems to have a feminine quality in the painting on the wall but there's not any real good documentation for that um this is just i think arthur evans may have named the room the queen's room but basically you can see the fresco very natural themes and very um pleasurable the most famous fresco that comes from the palace at Knossos is the so-called Toreador or bull leaping fresco. A Toreador is a bullfighter. And this is a fresco on one of the walls of one of the main rooms, uh, one of the biggest rooms in the palace. And you can just see here the darker parts of this image are the patches of fresco that are 
original that remain and the lighter areas that all that light blue that's been painted there is a reconstruction done uh, in the 1920s I believe that is meant to fill in the gaps from what was um, what was remaining of this image now again the bull of course continues to be an important symbol from ancient times to the the Bronze Age here at uh, the Palace at Canassos and notice that you seem to have um, a, some kind of ceremony being descri described. We don't know exactly, but we can tell that there are two women, one at either end of the bull, and then one man who is vaulting or leaping across, it seems, the back of the bull. Uh, we don't know if this was a leisure activity or a religious activity. We don't know exactly what the role of the women would be, um, if they're meant to be acrobats, you know. I mean, we don't, we don't really know, except that here we have another scene where women are active and seem to be at least as important as men, and a scene that's not any kind of conflict or war scene, but just seems to be a scene of... Again, we don't know if it's religious or leisure entertainment, but basically um, a peaceful scene. Now, um, also you can see here around the border of the Toreador fresco, the artist has painted the wall to mimic precious stone as if this were uh, put into a, a frame that was kind of like, you know, um, a mar polished marble or things like that. So, uh, but very, very evocative of and suggestive of wealth and leisure. Here's a nice close-up of the Toreador fresco so you can see the darker areas are the original areas of the fresco and then the lighter areas that are filled in are from the 1930s. I mean this seems to be a pretty reasonable reconstruction based upon the parts of the fresco that that remained intact uh, but it is a reconstruction the later areas. And it's a nice close-up too. I mean here you can see some um, interesting changes from Egyptian art, a little bit more naturalism in the figure. If you take a look at the woman on the left, um, she is really done from a side view as opposed to that kind of stiffer convention that you see in the ancient Near East and then in Egypt of the composite view. Although, of course, the face is a profile face. Now, here's a fresco from Santorini, which is another one of these Minoan cultures in the in the Aegean region and I just like this because it's a fresco uh, that's very typical for the kind of decoration that you see and the kind of art that you see in Minoan culture. Here it's dolphins and fish. It makes sense. This is in a region on the Aegean and the Mediterranean area which is um, areas that are filled with I mean lots and lots of dolphins. You can go dolphin watching in the Mediterranean and uh, the the leisurely and pleasurable and uh, sort of um, peaceful nature of this society is evident in the kind of natural world phenomena that they take pleasure in representing inside their buildings. Here's another example from Santorini of an interior room with a landscape and uh, you can see with you know little rocky outcroppings and birds flying in the sky and and plants and flowers so just you know natural world pleasurable and peaceful. And then finally, here's one of my favorite frescoes from Santorini, which again is part of this Minoan world. Uh, this is from the Room of the Blue Monkeys, and it's exactly what it sounds like. I mean, look at that. It's like these b um, barrel of monkeys, monkeys, if you ever had that when you were a kid, you know what I'm talking about, with the hooked and curved arms and tails. Um, naturalistically depicted, um, you know, very carefully, you can see they've got... Uh, they've depicted their hands and their feet with those kind of prehensile toes, um, just sort of swinging from tree to tree in a uh, leisurely fashion. Also from Santorini, this is a little fresco of a, a bird of some kind and some foliage.